Hello everybody, it's ya boy Bandit Banks here and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I will be spending 100 days in raft survival. Over the next 100 days I will be throwing my hook, fighting birds, sharks, and there may even be a surprise cameo at some point in this video, so be sure to stick around for that. I just wanted to take this moment to say thanks for the continued support while I've been at school. My university semester just ended, which means I now have the next four months to make as many videos as I can and try to see how big I can make this YouTube thing go, as I have a ton of video ideas that I want to do over the next four months, so you're going to be getting a lot of content. In that spirit, I also made a Twitter and Instagram to do the whole influencer thing, so feel free to follow those if you want, links are in the description. And last thing, I know I said I was going to be doing Sons of the Forest next, but my old computer couldn't handle it, so I decided to do Raft first as my computer could do that, and I wanted to get something out to you guys somewhat soon. But now that my new computer is up and running, I will be streaming Sons of the Forest over on Twitch, link in the description if you want to tune in and watch that live as well as a bunch of other games as I want to start building my streaming audience too. Anyways, that's enough talk. Let me roll the shitty intro and then we can get straight into 100 days in Raft. Day one began with some relatively simple things. I hadn't played Raft since 2019, so I was just trying to figure shit out again and get a basic idea of what the hell was going on. This of course begins with throwing my hook, pulling stuff in, and crafting some basic items. By the end of the day, I had a nice little platform going, had a grill, a water purifier, and I also got a nice little surprise while doing some fishing. Turtles, what's up? Day 2 began with exploring my first island. Nothing too special on it, but I got jammed in such a way that I didn't even have to use my throwable anchor. So I could save that for a later date. Sir, you're in the... you're in the rock. No, no, not this one, not this one. After this, I just wanted to leave, so I built myself a sail and got unstuck. I found this sinking raft that had a nice crate on it for me, ran another island, and spent the entire night actually trying to figure out how to research things. Day 3 was a fairly straightforward day. Stopping at islands, gathering supplies, and encountering a pretty cool sea creature at night. What? Yo, that's so cool. What up, whale? The morning of day 4, I made an absolutely incredible scientific discovery. Oh. That's how you research. I then spent a good amount of time researching everything I could, with the rest of the day spent gathering supplies and crafting my first scarecrow. The morning of day 5, I decided to go fishing and use those fish to craft a shark bait. This was then used so I could dive around and dig up some sand on the ocean floor. Later in the day, I also started crafting and placing my first collection nets. The morning of day 6, I went diving again in order to craft a ton of wet bricks, which were then laid out to dry. Later in the day, I accidentally went past one of those sinking rafts, so that brought a bit of a tear to my eye. And underneath the moonlight, I realized how much of a beating my poor scarecrow was taking protecting all of my crops. The total time between recording day 6 and day 7 in real life was about a month, so I was kind of relearning a lot of stuff again on day 7. Day 7, I was heading towards this massive island until I saw a scary looking bird above it, so I made a business decision with the rest of the day kind of starting to plan out how I wanted this raft to look, and the game showing me that it worked absolutely perfectly. What the hell, bro? Jesus. Day 8 began by starting to move things around and trying to place things in some type of order. I then saw this absolutely massive island. Unfortunately, I couldn't get to it. And later at night, I showed that Bandit Banks is definitely a brave person. Alright. <laughs> Fuck. Hell, bro. The morning of day 9 was spent scuba diving. I then spent a little time reorganizing the food section and vibing out with my new scarecrow homie. And I got a visit from my absolute favorite part of this game at night. Oh, look at the turtles. What the? You see that? That was sick. Where they at? Be free, my friends. Go off into the moonlight. 
The morning of day 10, physics was defied. Oh, turtles are back. What up, brothers? I then managed to unalive the shark. Yay, 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 yay. Oh. Later in the day, I pulled up to a fairly creepy island with a trading post on it. And I then got to meet my arch nemesis of this entire series, a bird. The morning of day 11, I was doing some diving for clay and sand when I met, well, this thing. What are you? Hey! Oh my lord, ow! Which, ironically, wasn't the only weird animal I met on that island. What the fuck is this thing? Hey! And what happened next was a first for me, at least in terms of playthroughs where I was making a video out of them. Yep. I got hit with that boar bird combo and died. This actually changed the title of the video because originally I wanted I survived 100 days in raft, but I'm an honest man, so I changed it to what it is now. After this, I just decided to do a bit of farming and then peace out, watching the place that took my, my death virginity disappear off into the sunset. A bit later in the night, I was also able to finally craft my first smelter. The morning of day 12, I pulled up to another large island. This one had a bird that would not leave me alone. However, it wasn't too much of a problem as I spent the entire day underwater mining everything from sand to metal. I definitely didn't not forget to record day 13, but now it's day 14 and all I did on day 13 anyways was some design work in making this advanced water purifier, so it's fine. And to be completely honest, day 14 was fairly similar. I just kept designing stuff, adding stuff, expanding in general, with the seagulls not leaving me alone at all. Day 15 was another basic day. I pulled up to a large island and spent pretty much the entire day underwater scavenging for scrap metals as well as any other resources I could find. At night, I also decided to make a paint corner with a paint mill and a chest that I would pretty much never use. Day 16, I kind of started to build up, as my general plan for this raft was to expand more upwards rather than outwards. But besides that, it was just another day of collecting as many resources as I could carry, as well as finally getting around to crafting a bottle that could carry a lot more water than my simple bucket. Day 17, my expansion plans continued. I decided to pass by this island and not stop because I just wanted to collect supplies. Also making a big brain deduction at the very end of the night. So if the moon's setting there, that means the sun should be rising over here. The morning of day 18, I made a life-changing discovery. Whoa. This was followed up by diving at a nearby island that had a ton of metal underwater to mine. So much so that I actually kind of forgot to do something important. Uh oh. Well that is... That is not good. After narrowly avoiding that disaster, I decided it was finally time for me to make myself a bed. And then I slept peacefully through the night. The morning of day 19, I chucked myself another shark kill. I then promptly stopped at a nearby island to take advantage of my sharkless situation and gather a ton of metal. This led to me finally being able to craft myself a metal hook, and my god, what a difference. Gee, oh, wow. This hook is going fucking super sane. As day 20 rolls around, I build myself a second smelter to up my smelting production, as well as a stationary anchor because I got tired of throwing my bucket overboard. The rest of the day was me starting to build out my room as I wanted somewhere nice and cozy to call home. However, I did have one of those, am I stupid, moments when placing my calendar. Now we got a counter. Wait, but I'm on day 20. Oh, I've already survived 19 days. Okay, I, uh, okay. Yeah, I can count. Day 21, I started placing down the new and upgraded floors, ones that look much nicer as I wanted my raft to, you know, be nice, not be some old ass abandoned shack looking thing with me approaching and stopping at this large island before heading to bed. Day 22, I was back to fighting my demons, starting with this boar here, and while it almost didn't go well, I came out on top. That's what I'm talking about right there. 
the rest of the day was spent doing some extreme deep sea diving which could have led to me drowning but thankfully I'm just built different. Day 23 I started building more collection nets, expanding them out further and further so I could gather more trash from the ocean. With me finally starting to work on a bit of a storage room later at night. Day 24 I started replacing a good amount of the starting wood foundations with the nicer wood foundations as again I wanted this to look nice. Unfortunately, at some point during the day, our raft got turned sideways, which severely slowed down our collection efforts. However, what was lost in collection nets was made up for with my immense skill. Let's go. We don't miss out here. Come on. Day 25, I was doing some more decorating on my room, mounting my first head, when I made a weird discovery. How the hell do you get rid of that? What the hell did I just hit? Who's that? You telling me 20... What, what day is this? 25 days and I didn't notice this shit? And after reading this discovery, I realized something. There's a story in this game. Intriguing. But after a little more decorating, I decided to call it a night. The morning of day 26, I decided it was time to use up some of my leaves. Later in the day, I had another encounter with a pretty cool sea creature. Yo, that looks so sick, what the hell? I then crafted and researched the circuit board, unlocking the receiver and antenna, which means I can finally get started on the story. Day 27 was spent setting up my first bridge slash navigation area thing, followed by crafting and placing a receiver down and nearly dying of thirst at the end of the day. The majority of day 28 was spent expanding the top floor in order to house all of the antennas which were subsequently built and placed by the end of the day. I'm a dumbass and forgot to record day 29 so I'll let myself explain it. Yesterday I just got mad at this essentially that these were crossed and I moved it here so I knew which way we were going and uh that this is the way we were going. We're going towards this thing whatever it is. Yeah all right. Day 30 was primarily spent exploring this abandoned oil rig of sorts. I swam, looted, and then parkoured my way to the very top, where I met this chick. A friendly face. You don't know I'm friendly. I got 70 days, sweetheart. Oh no, I'm good. And after that insightful conversation, I went back to my raft, looked at my storybook, and figured out where I was going next. Radio tower number zero, zero four oh six. Is that the number it was on? Okay, so number zero four oh six is what it was on, which means number one eight four three might be where I gotta go next. I then watched the oil rig behind me disappear into the sunset. Day thirty one was spent heading towards the next coordinates on my radio as well as fully closing in my kind of main room on the bottom floor and looking at the newly unlocked items that I got from the previous oil rig. Day 32 I closed in on the next story location, however I had this weird graphics glitch with it. So if I look down I can see it, but if I look at it I can't. There it is, there it's gone, there it is, there it's gone, but I'm going to have to assume that's where I'm going. <laughs> I then killed a shark which was good timing. And I then proceeded to head inside this yacht, which was the next story location. After doing some looting, I ran across this thing. What the? What are you? Looks like an armadillo. And proceeded to do some looting and exploring for the rest of the day. However, when it got dark, I headed back to my raft, but the shark I killed earlier, its brother was not happy with me. <gasps> oh. My heart, my heart, my heart, my heart, my heart, my heart. Day 33, I was exploring the wreck. I was trying to find parts to build a carjack and a bomb, as that was kind of the objective of this, was to find those. By the end of the day, I had constructed a carjack that was then used to move this giant cabinet out of the way. You couldn't just move that? And like a true coward, I went back to my raft when it got dark and went to bed. Day 34, I wanted to finish up on this island bright and early. So I got to exploring right away. Not too far into the day I managed to get all the parts to craft myself one bomb, which I then used to blow open the door to the bridge. 
The bridge contained coordinates for the next location, along with a blueprint for an engine and a steering wheel. When I got back to my raft, I punched in the coordinates for the next location, realized I couldn't get there because it was going up current and I would need engines to do that, and then headed off. Day 35, I watched the sunrise because, well, it was, you know, it was beautiful. I then crafted a steering wheel and placed it on top of my newly constructed bridge, which was actually on top of my room at the highest point of the raft. I also wanted to get engines going relatively soon as they were important, as they could get you wherever you wanted to go, no matter the current. But I was going to need a lot more copper to do that, so I went diving. Day 36, I began working on an engine bay and crafted my first engine. However, when I tried to fire it up, it wouldn't start. This is because one engine can only handle 100 foundations, and I was clearly over that limit. This means I was going to need a couple more engines at least, though I wasn't exactly sure how many. I spent the rest of the day collecting supplies to build out the engine bay more, and craft more engines. Day 37, I built this thing, and honestly, that's all you really need to know. The morning of day 38 was the closest I came to dying of dehydration this entire series. After this, I found out that two engines was also not enough, so I tried my very best to start heading to the next place, based on sail power. However, it wasn't going fast. Day 39, I forgot to record... again. I'm feeling like a dumbass now, but I promise it won't happen that much more <laughs> throughout this series. Thankfully, day 39 and 40 were pretty much similar. I stopped heading towards the next point with sail power because I was going so slow and just decided to kind of troll along, get myself some resources, and build out the engine bay. The morning of day 41, I placed this chair down, which had a pretty good view, actually. Then I placed down the third engine, tested it out, and wouldn't you know it, three was enough. And with my engine bay now fully operational, I set course, turned on the engines, and headed towards the next story location. Day 42, I arrive at the next island and kind of take a step back to marvel at the size of it. Holy shit, that is a big ass island. I spend the rest of the day prepping and then spend some time circling the island, trying to find the best place to actually park the ship and disembark. The morning of day 43, I found this little beach to park my ship at, and disembarked. And in hindsight, I probably should have taken this sign a little more seriously. Oh shit. <laughs> that can't be good. While exploring the island, I fell down this cliff face and, well... <gasps> oh no. After attacking this bear for a solid three minutes, I thought it was a glitched bear because it should have been dead, at least I thought. It turns out this is actually a bear called Mama Bear, who's like the boss on the island, so that just shows my luck. So you can imagine what happened when my little naive mind decided to get out of my protective spot as I just thought this bear was glitched. What the fuck? I then spent the rest of the day fuming, actually, over my stupidity and supplying back up. Day 44, I went back up the island, finding this drawbridge that I had to drop. I thought I was very dead there. I then explored relay station number four on the other side of it. The rest of the day, I actually needed some wood, so I just went around gathering as much as I could find. The morning of day 45, I had a graceful moment. Actually a beautiful game when you're not getting mauled to death. I then dropped some berries into this basket to pull the old Kansas City Shuffle on Mama Bear so I could sneak into her cave and grab this machete. With this machete, I was able to cut down some vines and access Relay Tower 6, in which I found blueprints, was able to switch on the power for this, making it 2 out of 3 completed, and meet a new homie named Johnny. If you need some muscle on board, look no further. His eyebrows are like freaking me out. Day 46, I really wanted to finish up on this island, so I got to work right away. I had to parkour over this toxic pond, for some reason, but on the other side of that was relay station number two, along with the ranger station. I first explored relay station number two, and upon activating it, I got the coordinates for the next location, and then explored the ranger station, getting some blueprints and supplies. After this was all completed, I headed back to my raft, 
punched in those coordinates and headed off. The morning of day 47, I was very excited to be leaving this island. Goodbye, you big dumb island. The majority of the rest of the day was spent gathering wood while making our way to the next story point. Day 48, I arrived and began exploring the next location called Caravan Town. However, there was this big dumb bird that would not leave me alone at all. By the end of the day, I was so annoyed that I decided tomorrow I would kill this thing, an idea which was cemented after I tried to simply go to bed. Day 49, I took my trusty bow and started laying into that stupid bird. And thankfully, it didn't take too long to knock it out of the sky. I completed this pretty cool pipe puzzle, which awarded me a zipline part in the end, and then spent the rest of the day scouring the island for battery parts. Day 50 began by doing quite a deep sea dive, going air pocket to air pocket, and I might have got a little too immersed in the experience. Why am I breathing hard in real life? <laughs> But after making it to the bottom and collecting some parts and blueprints, I headed back up. This was followed up by crafting some explosive powder made out of a previously murdered pufferfish, and then using my aerospace engineering expertise to launch this rocket. Whoa. Oof. The remains of this rocket gave me another zipline part as well as the blueprint to make fireworks. The morning of day 51, I found this hall of hooks, and I can't even lie to you guys, I, I got a little emotional reading them, for some reason. Why are these actually, like, kinda sad? Why am I getting a little emotional over, I guess, these memorial hooks over people I never met in this game? Anyways, I was able to craft myself a zipline tool. The zipline tool allowed me to get to the infirmary, grab the mayor's key, head on over to the mayor's office, open up the mayor's chest and grab the next story coordinates along with some blueprints. It was then time to say goodbye to Caravan Town. Day 52, we were floating in the right direction to head to the next story location so I didn't need to turn on the engines, so I spent the majority of the day just collecting resources and doing a little bit of work on my room. Day 53, I arrive at whatever this is. Naturally, I head inside and am immediately fighting all these rats again, so that's pretty fun. The day ends with me trying to solve this giant crane puzzle, which of course I eventually do. The morning of day 54, I come across this room and have to ask the obvious question. Now I wonder if that's safe. I then make my way on up to the surface and meet these friendly little robots roaming around. What up, buddy? What the f- the majority of the rest of the day is spent going from apartment building to apartment building, looting it for that sweet, sweet tape needed to complete this story mission. Day 55 was literally the same as day 54, just trying to find as much tape as possible. Day 56, I believed I had collected enough tape, so I headed on downstairs and repaired a ton of circuit breakers. This allowed me to go up an elevator, do some parkour, grab a blueprint, and find a keypad that needed a code. Thankfully, a note I picked up earlier let me know exactly where I had to look. However, the code didn't do exactly what I was expecting. What is good? Ayo, my bad. I then swam on over to the recently jettisoned part of this giant dome and got some very important story dialogue. Shut up, Karen. I then picked up the coordinates, admired this captain's beard, and headed on back to my raft. Due to me pretty much being a story ho at this point, day 57, I set course and immediately head off towards the next story point. I also finished up the very top floor of the bridge today, allowing me to move all of my navigation equipment up there. This gives me one place where I can go to fully navigate and control the raft. Day 58, I arrived at the new story location and immediately started diving. I was doing some exploring underwater, fighting anglerfish, you know, all the good jazz. After collecting a bunch of spotlight parts, I made my way through this Home Alone type trap setup thing. Why it's here, I don't know, but it's here. That scared the ever-living shit out of me, what the... 
At the end of the day, I made my way back to the raft, unloading my supplies, and then dived deep, deep, deep down into the depths of this construction site. The morning of day 59, I keep diving through this underwater structure, eventually arriving at this gate. What? Uh... <laughs> Fucking hell. This boss fight turned into one of the most infuriating parts of this entire series for me. Essentially, you had to get this shark to ram into a post, place an explosive barrel in that post, and then get him to ram into it one more time to open up a hole in the ceiling. After a long, hard-fought battle, I just needed this shark to ram into one more post, and I was home free. Dude, just fucking charge. Fuck. Shit. Fucking shark, fucker. Dip. Why the fuck would you do that? You. Day 60, I do a little bit of restocking, swim on down to the boss fight, and beat it. Yeah, no, I was literally one hit away from beating it last time, so this was just an annoying second trip. I then collect myself some shark meat, a blueprint, and a crane key. After this, I make my way to the top of the crane, insert the crane key, and well... Whoops. I then head into the bowels of the newly destroyed building, collect a blueprint along with the coordinates to the next location. Day 61, I decide I'm not going to head to the next location right away as I want to start to build out the raft just a little bit more with all the new technologies. However, first I gotta place the trophies for my rhino shark and the bird I killed at Caravan Town. Later in the day, I head off to a nearby island to use my newly crafted metal detector to try to get myself some titanium. Day 62 began by making the line of collectors at the front of my raft a solid line rather than like every other one. I also dug up my first bit of titanium today on a small island, so that was pretty awesome. I then spent a little time underwater collecting some resources. Day 63 was pretty much also spent underwater, this time diving for clay and sand. This clay and sand was going to be used to create a new and improved smelter room. Day 64 was a pretty boring day of mainly just expanding my storage room, so that's boring. However, day 65 I found my home country of Canada. There were a few scary polar bears on it, but you know, we deal with that all the time up here, so I wasn't that concerned. I also browsed the trading post stock and realized that I had nothing to sell. Honestly, not too much happened on day 66. I did a treasure hunt on an island, but that's pretty much the only highlight of today. Day 67, I accidentally destroyed part of my room while expanding the storage facility. I then obviously had to repair my room just a little bit, with me crafting a fourth engine later in the day just so there was two on each side and it looked nice. Day 68, I decided to watch the sunrise from my nice little chair, just because I could. I then visited two islands throughout the day, collecting supplies, digging up treasure, you know the drill. Day 69, I once again showed my masculine characteristics. <laughs> Nothing's wrong. Ever been so scared you started singing? <laughs> I then spent the rest of the day building out the engine bay, adding some biofuel and pipes to fuel my engines, and then boxing the engines in as I thought they deserved their own little room. Day 70, I visited an island in the morning and then decided, you know what, it's time to start heading to the next story location. So that's what I did. Turns out this story location is absolutely massive, so I spent the entire night sailing around trying to get as close to the point as possible, but that was easier said than done. Day 71, I disembarked onto this frozen tundra, which was the next story location called Temperance. Boy, did this place feel like home. I ended up fighting a polar bear and then ripping wires out of this electrical pole thing. I then found a snowmobile, so that was awesome. 
and then began doing this electrical wire puzzle thing. Once I ran out of wire, I went around the island collecting more, but then I came across this place. What did... what just happened? After diving through some frozen water and looking at stars, I was able to solve this kind of complex puzzle actually, opening this safe and getting my hands on a key along with some blueprints. Day 72, I had gotten enough wire to completely finish the wire puzzle, unlocking all the igloos and doing some looting. And then went back to the raft to drop off all of my gathered materials, and then head towards the two giant lights in the sky. Once I arrived, I used my previously gathered materials to open this giant door. Apparently, I had to fix this nuclear reactor, a job that I was grossly underqualified for, but whatever, here we go. I first had to solve this periodic table puzzle, which was actually pretty easy, and then I had to start dealing with these bugs, which really sucked. Day 73 began by solving this massive laser room type puzzle. It actually took me quite a while, but eventually I got there. I then inserted all the control rods and everything worked perfectly. This should end well. Can we like, not, please? I then had to head downstairs, kill some bugs and turn some knobs. But after that was all done, I had saved the day, as always. I went to grab my rewards, picking up a blueprint, the coordinates to Utopia, and waking this dude up. Oh, yo, my bad, bro. What up, Shogo? Day 74, I wasn't quite done on Temperance yet. I wanted to cash in some of my tokens in the vending machine, as well as explore these newly opened bunkers, which held a ton of titanium. After this, I went back to my raft to decorate just a little bit. Day 75, I start my journey again. I know Utopia is the final location, so I don't exactly want to rush there. In the morning, I used the titanium I have gathered to craft myself an engine control panel. I placed this control panel up on the bridge, allowing me to control my engine's direction if they're on or off, as well as an anchor that I will eventually craft. The rest of the day is spent island hopping to try to get myself some more titanium. Day 76, I decided to finally build myself a juicer and a cooking pot, though I won't lie, I didn't really use these till the very end of the playthrough, with the rest of the day spent doing basic housekeeping things before going to bed. Day 77, I was a little excited in the morning when I found myself some titanium. Ooh, yes! <laughs> titanium. Let's go! This titanium was used to craft an advanced stationary anchor, which was just an anchor that could be controlled from the engine control panel. I then placed this anchor in a hidden little room near the engine bay, which meant I could finally remove the big ugly anchor from the center of my main room. By the end of the day, my little anchor room was mostly done, meaning that it was time to call it a night. Day 78, I decided to stop at this large island, which meant it was time to test out if my bridge was working. If I put it up, we're going again. If I put it down, we're stopped again. Let's go. I wanted to stop at this island to try to capture some animals, and after missing my first net shot, I only had one left. I caught and named my animal, putting him in a little pen I made on my raft. I was then able to shear mini banks and use his wool to learn a whole lot of stuff. Day 79, I noticed that Mini Banks was depressed because he didn't have any grass to eat, so I wanted to go around and try to find some dirt. I, I didn't find any. Day 80, I realized I had a lot of batteries that I needed to get charged, so I built this windmill that would charge my batteries for me. I honestly spent a good portion of the day trying to navigate around this giant frozen island that I wanted nothing to do with, and then spent some time later in the day looking at how depressed my pet was. Oh, dude, I feel bad. I need to get grass for this guy. Look at him. To get over this depression, I decided to do some decorating in my room, even adding this cozy little fireplace late at night. The morning of day 81, I expanded my animal enclosure just a little bit, so I felt a bit better about starving him. And I also discovered later in the day that I could dig on a rock. What? Yeah, alright, yeah, that makes fucking perfect sense, actually. 
Day 82, I was treasure hunting on an island to try to dig up some titanium, but I dug up something else instead. What the fuck is that? Obviously, I had to find a beautiful spot to put this piece, so I spent some time doing that. And then I just sailed around all day trying to find another big island, preferably one that wasn't frozen so I could get my hands on some dirt. I get a bit more titanium the morning of day 83 and use it to craft myself an advanced water purifying station. I then make a little water corner for myself hidden by a new staircase I added outside. And honestly, I don't know why I didn't craft this earlier. This is such a useful item. Day 84, I finally find myself a large island and immediately begin scouring it. After a day of scouring it, a bit later at night, I finally find myself a cave, inside of which is some dirt. And I am happy. I then of course need to head home, research it, and craft myself a grass patch. The morning of day 85, I watched something spectacular as Mini Banks finally ate something for the first time in weeks. Let's go! Look at him standing up straight. I then headed on over to the island and captured another animal, getting a little excited when I did. Did I get him? Let's go! Joys. After naming him, I took him on back and I couldn't shear him, so I didn't really know what to do with this dude. And after this, I was getting brave and I decided, you know what? It's time for me to take down one of these bird bosses on these islands, because I haven't done it yet except for the one at Caravan Town, and these things have been annoying me the entire playthrough. And I've evolved at this point, I'm pretty much a god, so I'll be fine. <laughs> That's, um... Uh, lovely. That's lovely. Wonderful. Wonderful. I won't even lie, I was a little upset, but I won't be defeated. So I head back, and I get his ass. And after he's been defeated, I make a bed out of his remains and sleep like an absolute baby. Day 86, we have the return of a very familiar character on my channel. The man himself, Mad Toaster Waffles. To be completely honest today, I just showed him around, gave him the ropes, and we had a couple interesting conversations throughout the day. And there, and we got my animals in there. Hey, what? <laughs> you put mini banks down, all right? <laughs> mini banks? <laughs> No, I haven't. Yeah, this is this is this is my home. Cool, cool. Love it. And we're all set. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> it's like a whole different game. It's such a stupid fucking location. How did you drop a rock on me? I didn't. I'm inside. That's that's the, the bird. bird. That's the bird at the island. <laughs> Just How did it up. drop it through the fucking roof? Throughout the entire series, I had been collecting clams. I didn't know what they were for, but I figured they may have been important. The morning of day 87, I found out what they were for. Um, oh, I need a... Like straw? I, that's what the giant clams are for, okay. A, a bird's nest? Is that a clams? Yeah, I keep collecting these giant clams, and I've heard people say that they're really like valuable, but I didn't know for what. Toast also decided a bit later in the day that he wanted to go off on his own. Yeah, but there's nothing connecting you to me. All right, you know, you know what? I'm making my own raft series over here. <laughs> You're Sorry. starting your own hundred days. <laughs> All right, hey guys, this is uh, Bad Toaster Waffles. I'm doing a hundred days in uh, in, in raft. Uh. <laughs> How are we still connected? The morning of day 88, Toast tried claiming ownership over certain items of mine. You still want potatoes? What yeah. do you mean, your potatoes? <laughs> My potatoes. I put them on the grill, they're mine. <laughs> Not how it works. Toast also, granted, started asking some pretty fair questions. I feel like you should be able to make like a watering can or something, you know? You can make a sprinkler. Why haven't you done that? I don't know. You can make one. <laughs> we then made a sprinkler that would water the grass plants in the animal pen, just so we wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. Later in the day, when we were trying to figure out how to get worms for fishing bait, Toast came up with a really good solution. I can't dig in on either of those. Oh, all right, I'm gonna Google it. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Day 89, Toast and I decided that we were tired of waiting around. We wanted to finish this game. 
So we set a course and headed towards Utopia. By about midday we had arrived and the rest of the day was just spent prepping for whatever Utopia had in store for us. And I feel like I gotta mention that we had a bit of a romantic moment later at night. You ready to visit Utopia, Toast? Uh, sure. Day 90, we headed over to Utopia to begin exploring it. And immediately I was pretty excited. Dude, there's so much dirt. There is so much dirt. <laughs> That's all that matters is that there's a bunch of dirt. Dude, you have no idea how rare dirt is. We started by doing this pipe puzzle, and to be honest, we had questions. Who fucking sets up their pipes like this? Yes, what the madman decided, you know what we're gonna do today? For some reason, I could not figure this out. I spent a solid 10, 15 minutes, literally the entire day on this, while Toast completed the other two. And at the end of the day, he came over to see if I needed a hand. Done. Uh, Just think, if I didn't come, you would have been here for days. <laughs> thank you, Toast. Are we going for a, we going for a nap? <laughs> The morning of day 91, Toast and I found this map. We then used this map to dig up dirt patches, giving us a code which we used to open this door. The rest of the day was spent fighting hyenas and then stacking boxes to get on roofs and try to complete this electric puzzle. Early in the morning on day 92, we finished the electric puzzle, getting everything online and allowing us to grab this CO2 canister. With this, we were able to finish up this harpoon gun and zip line on over to this office building where we collected a key. We then found some trapped inhabitants, then a second key, and finally we were able to open up the main door. We then did a little bit of parkour and we realized something about the so-called bad guy on this island who we found out is named Olaf. See, Olaf's not that bad, he put up nets. <laughs> this Olaf guy seems alright. Yeah. He just wanted to make fun puzzles. We then completed the parkour, followed by a rather annoying elevator puzzle, and then we got to meet Olaf. The drinking. The filthy rafters turned luxury apartments into a there he is. scrapyard. Relieving them of the responsibility was the only decent thing I could do for them. I can't Hit him with an arrow. <laughs> how ungrateful all of you are. Aww. And after that, we had to complete one more elevator puzzle, because why not? It's now day 93, which means it's time to complete some more puzzles. Woohoo! The first of which was to complete the parkour course, which was easy enough for me, because I did it fine the first time. However, Toast was having a few issues. Nearly there. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. One more time! <laughs> And then you gotta wait for me, because uh, I waited for you to do the sprinkler puzzle. <laughs> After this was completed, it was time to face off with Olaf directly. And by that I mean he was chucking nades at us while we tried to build a box ladder up to him thing. After we got up there, he ran off, so we chased him down, which led us directly into a pit of hyenas. So that was another fun thing. To get out of this one, it was the same idea. We had to build a box ladder while killing hyenas to get up to him. Eventually we did, and we had to chase him one more time, and when we arrived at the final destination, we realized we may be smarter than pretty much every action-slash-horror movie character ever. This... I don't, I don't like this. No. <laughs> uh, what the fuck is that thing? Yeah. Alright, give me a second, I gotta do uh, some tactical rearranging. Yeah. Alright, uh, yeah. you can't attack with a shovel, right? No, you uh, ever... more arrows? No, no, no. Do you ever feel like you shouldn't do something? Like... Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty often. This just does... <laughs> There's nothing about this that looks like a good idea. Like... Yeah, like, we could just, like, leave. Why, why don't we just leave? Can we just... I know, I know we did all those puzzles and stuff, but, like... And those people down there want someone to save them. Yeah. Alright, fuck them. Let's go. Just kidding. The people of Utopia needed a hero, and boy was Bandit Banks here, because I need every sub I can get. Can I fish from here? Uh, who knows? I think I can fish from here. A good way into this fight, something unfortunate happened. Um. Alright, they're by the, um... I'm down. <laughs> Find a bed? Uh oh. Oh shit. 
Yeah, good luck, man. <laughs> but like a true hero, yeah, boy, clutched up. Oh, I killed him. You killed him? Yeah. Nice. The morning of day 94 was waiting for Toast to make his way back up to me, which actually took a lot longer than you probably think. And once Toast arrived, it was time to finish the story. I think this is the end. Is he gonna kill himself? I think he's gonna fall out. Did we just leave him here? It's kinda fucking cruel. I wonder how long he talks for. Dude, Dude, we get it. <laughs> All players must be nearby. How do we dry the world? <laughs> when the ocean itself broke civilization, my screen's too big for this. Me too. So, like, do we get to trade with them, kind of thing now? Shh. Or is that just it? I don't know. <laughs> That doesn't look like our raft. After that beautiful moment was done, Toast finally found something he'd been wanting to find forever. Aye! Alright, let's, let's see what we get. And then we also got to turn the tables on Olaf a bit. How many, how many options does he have? After we were done up here, we headed back to our raft and tearfully left Utopia. Day 95, we were heading to Tangora, also known as the Giant Glass Dome, because there were some vending machines there that we wanted to use our tokens on. During the day, I also mounted Alpha's head and did some general reorganizing in my room, while Toast decided to build his own raft behind mine. And by the end of the day, we had arrived. Day 96, I entered Tangora and started buying everything I could in the vending machines. However, there were still a few items I couldn't get. Therefore, Toast and I spent the rest of the day gathering tokens from the nearby apartment buildings so we could get our hands on the radio and piano. Turns out that the radio plus the cassettes I picked up earlier in the game had some absolute banger combinations. Day 97, I spent an unhealthy amount of the day learning the piano, and I still kind of sucked at it by the end. Yeah, no, I'm shit at this. That wasn't horrible. Day 98, I captured yet another animal, naming it Mini Toast, then spent some time making the animal enclosure a bit bigger and nicer, while Toast... Actually, I don't know what Toast did today. Day 99, I decided to finally try out the cooking pot and see if I even liked it. Toast also decided to cosplay as a boar today, so good for him. Turns out prepared meals actually do a lot of good things, and I probably should have been doing this for the last 99 days, but... You know, better late than never. Speaking of things working better, Toast asked me why I hadn't made any flippers yet and I didn't know, so he decided to make a pair for both of us to test out. Wow. I have been missing out on that for a while. Again, I really should have been doing this a lot sooner. You already know I had to watch the sunrise on the beautiful day 100. Toast and I realized we wanted some fireworks tonight, but for that we needed explosive goo, so we started trying to head towards a big island. Turns out we had added too much to the raft, so it wasn't able to push all of our foundations, so we just started rapidly deleting foundations until eventually we were heading in the right direction. I forgot to mention by the way that I finished the engine house, so now it is fully covered and looks alright. Once we got to the island we split up and it didn't take us long to find a puffer fish. After this, I finished up my room finishing all the walls of heads, and you know what? I think it turned out pretty good. In fact, my entire room turned out pretty good. I am very happy with it. And with that all taken care of, it was time at night to launch our fireworks display. Wow. <laughs> Was it worth it? No. <laughs> but it was beautiful in its own All special, right. unique way. There you go. 
Toast and I then watched the absolutely phenomenal sunrise on day 101, meaning that I had officially spent 100 days in Raft. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. This video took quite a bit of effort, so I really do appreciate it. Again, I'm going to be uploading a lot more content over the next four months, and I appreciate you guys being here for it. I was talking to Toast, and he said if people like this video half as much as they like the 100 days in the forest video, then he would do 200 days with me. This means that if this video gets over 20,000 likes, you'll be seeing 200 days in Raft. Again, if you do want to see these playthroughs live, including Sons of the Forest, which is going on right now, at least at the time this video is being filmed, the link to my Twitch is in the description, where I'll be streaming pretty much every playthrough I do, along with a variety of other games. So, I'd appreciate it if you would check that out. My other socials are also down there, if you do care at all. Anyways, thank you all for stopping by. It's been your boy Bandit Banks, and I will catch you all in the next one.